Hi. Let's talk about the parent trap. Musical styles are still a very important form of communication for our young people. Hi, I'm Joe Feinstein. Before we start, I want to get two quick points out of the way. One, this is going to be a fairly shorter episode than normal for a reason I'll get into in a moment. But two, before anyone asks, no, I didn't watch the original film this is based off of. Why? Because... I don't really feel like it. This 1998 film was the directorial debut of Nancy Myers, who also wrote the script. Uh, she also wrote Father of the Bride and its sequel, as well as going on to direct What Women Want and Something's Gotta Give. Our ears are blessed by getting to listen to Alan Silvestri's score for the film, and if you aren't familiar with who he is, he's done everything from the MCU, to Forrest Gump, to Predator, and he's even done Tales from the Crypt. The star of the cast is Lindsay Lohan, and despite how young she is, she knocks it right out of the park with her dual roles, especially considering this is her silver screen debut. She did some TV stuff prior to this, but certainly nothing to the scale, and it's really impressive. Dennis Quaid plays her father, and I don't think I need to elaborate on the numerous roles he's done because he's big enough. Natasha Richardson plays her mother, and I can't elaborate on her numerous roles because I've never heard of any of them before writing the script. Seriously, apart from being credited in one episode of Tales from the Crypt, I have no idea what any of these movies and shows are. The story revolves around these two twins who were separated at birth and happen to meet each other at summer camp just after their 11th birthday. Once they realize the situation, they get the idea to impersonate each other so they can meet the other parent. Now, you'd almost certainly think that, this being a 90s Disney film, that they would use the opportunity to make some sort of cheesy scenes, but Nancy Myers decided to keep it mostly serious, and it's quite touching to see throughout the film. Now, I'm going to shake up my usual presentation style a bit here, because there really aren't any hidden lessons or crazy behind-the-scenes stuff to dive in with this one, but rather, I want to discuss just how tight they managed to keep this film from start to end. I mean, seriously, there's hardly any fat to be found. Once the plot kicks in, everything we see only serves the story and moves things forward. And sure, you could try to argue that the first 25 minutes we get in the girls' camp could be considered silly shenanigans that doesn't really serve anything, but even in those 25 minutes of mostly silly stuff, we get a few pieces of really important character building. When Annie arrives at camp with her butler Barton, they perform their own secret handshake. And at first you think, oh yeah, that's cute, they have a little thing that they share because they're so close. And yes, true, but it works even better because that's one of the major things that Hallie has to learn in order to fool everyone into thinking that she's the other twin. During the short rivalry time we get at the camp, we get to see that Hallie is shown to be more street smart with her more layback, charismatic attitude, her skill at cards, and her penchant for pranks. We also get to see that Annie is the more book smart, being properly tutored in fencing, keeping an itinerary of all of her belongings, and being the half of the pair that logically puts all of the pieces together of their relation, where Hallie merely sees everything as coincidental and unnoteworthy. When they start their switching training, we get to see Annie showing Hallie the pictures of the family, which were already mentioned before by Martin. Hell, even in the very opening credits, we get a glimpse of the wine that the parents had at their wedding, and that Nick will go on to buy and store away, sharing it with Elizabeth later in this film. That's what I mean by nearly no fat. Even when we're supposed to be having a fun, lighthearted time before the serious story takes place, the writing still provides us some really great continuity and story building. When the pair leave camp and go to each other's homes, we get some seriously touching moments when the girls meet their parents. I'll play as much as I can without the YouTube god striking me down. if I get this. You miss being able to call me dad? Yeah, I really have, dad. 
And see, I don't want to hear anyone ever say that Lindsay Lohan can't act. She was a child, and yet she gave a fantastic performance of people overjoyed to see somebody while pretending to be someone else and acting like everything is normal. I mean, it gets me every time. Along the way, each of the girls gets discovered by someone close to the respective parent. For Hallie, it's Annie's grandfather, and for Annie, it's Hallie's caretaker. And while we don't get to really hear the ensuing conversation and reaction from the grandfather, we get an unbelievably sweet scene with Chessie's reaction. Nobody, nobody, forget I mentioned it. Almost as if I were Annie. You know about Annie? I am Annie. Chessie, why are you looking at her like that? I'm looking at her like I've looked at her for 11 years. Since the day she came up from the hospital. Six pounds, 11 ounces, 21 inches long. This is how I look at her. Can I hug her? Now, I'm going to skip the scenes where the kids tell the truth to their parents and the ensuing conversations between the parents themselves, because I truly encourage you to go and watch this film for yourself and experience it. It's a really sweet, really fun time. And honestly, if I had one complaint about the film, it'd be that Meredith and her parents were a bit cartoonishly evil. But this is Disney, so I suppose it's par for the course, isn't it? Be nice, Daddy. He's everything you ever wanted for your little girl, plus millions more. Then you know I'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and with the larger talking points out of the way, I want to get into some of the smaller interesting things that I found. A, the fencing scene that we get 10 minutes into the film is actually a lot of fun, and it definitely feels like it's a homage to The Princess Bride. B, they make an absolutely wild statement when they say, I eat them with peanut butter. You do? That is so weird. So do I. You're kidding. Most people find that totally disgusting. You know goddamn well that's 100% false. Everyone in the world, even people who are allergic to peanuts, loves Oreos and peanut butter. I've had a family member nearly go to the hospital because they were jonesing for a taste. And last little fun fact, the boy in the start of the film who accidentally got sent to the all-girls camp is actually Lindsay Lohan's brother. So yeah, just a fun, sweet film that I absolutely recommend you going back and checking out. But I'm curious, what do you think? Musical styles are still a very important form of communication for our young people. Hi, I'm Joe Feinstein.